All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So Xbox, as we know, from the beginning of this generation, has had those two SKUs. It's been a strategy that has been highly scrutinized across the industry. Everybody has their opinion on it, whether this is good or bad for holding back the generation, holding back games. And there have been examples, I would say, far more in the positive side of things when it comes to the Xbox Series S, showing that it was a good call by Microsoft versus the negative side of things, I mean, you think of some of the negative things in what's going on with Baldur's Gate and the split screen, that is one that does come to mind. So people always have these opinions as to whether this was a bad decision and is it putting too much strain on devel developers to have to create games for two SKUs instead of one, or I guess three SKUs if you're including the PlayStation 5. Now, like I said, I think there's been far more positives. I don't think the Series S was a bad choice. I actually think it was a very good choice. And I think some of these numbers that Xbox we see here in these documents that have been published kind of back that up and kind of reinforce their choice for putting out the Xbox Series S. So they have numbers in this heavily redacted document from the Xbox Activision Blizzard case. And it says here that nearly 75% or 74.8% to be exact of the Xbox Series owners own an Xbox Series S, leaving about 25% of the owners on Xbox owning the Xbox Series X. So more than half, far more than half, 75% of people who own Xbox are Series S owners. It is selling far more than the Xbox Series X. And I, can th I can think of a couple of reasons. The Series S has been widely more available than the Series X from the start of this generation. Even when there were supply issues with the Xbox Series X, you were still kind of able to get an Xbox Series S. The price tag, that is one of the main things of being $299 versus $499. A lot of people will just impulse buy an Xbox Series S when they see games that they want to check out, when they see stuff coming into Xbox Game Pass. If you're somebody who likes first-person shooters and you can't really afford the highest end PC, but you still want to get a good FPS, good frames per second and, and stuff like that. An Xbox Series S is a very good way to do that as you're getting some of those big shooters like Halo and Call of Duty where they have the option of getting up to 120 FPS. So you're getting great experiences on this cheaper, smaller console. And that's one of the main reasons why people are buying it. Myself, I have both. I have the X, I have the S. I think they're both great. They both serve different features. I mean, I have the X because I get the 4K out of it. I still have a lot of physical media and I like having that disc drive. The S is kind of that secondary console that I do go to and I've used it on monitors. I've used it on big screen TVs. It's really done everything for me and I've had really no complaints when it comes to the Xbox Series S. So it's here and it's not going away. And we have saw as well through documents that came out the other day that they're going to continue with this two SKU for the foreseeable future and probably going into the next generation there will probably be again that cheaper option to get into be playing these big triple a games so this is only going to incentivize them when they see the numbers the only thing here that i would say is the biggest drawback for this is for somebody who likes physical games this is more data showing Xbox and Microsoft that the future is digital. And I mean, that's something we've known from the very start. I hope physical never goes away, but it will eventually be going away. It's just inevitable with the way that the industry is going, with the way that the majority of people like playing their games these days. The It's a minority of people like myself that enjoy collecting, enjoy picking up the physical games and stuff like that. And is still having these digital options on the side is something I have as a secondary thing. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens going forward with Xbox. We know that they are potentially coming out. I mean, it's essentially confirmed at this point with the leak that occurred with a Xbox Series X digital version, which I hope if they do put that out, because again, these plans that they do have out there, this isn't in any way going to be exactly as we have seen in those documents. They may change things up. There may be additions to what they are planning on doing. They may have pivoted by the time they actually release stuff. But if they do put out that Series X digital, I hope it comes with a detachable disk drive or at least something you can purchase, or they just keep the current Series X on the market to give you that choice because they got to do what the PlayStation 5 is seemingly going to be doing, which is still giving the option to people who are picking up physical games who have picked up physical games for these first three or four years on the market. I would be surprised if they just completely stopped selling the other version 
of the Xbox Series X. But again, we will wait and see how this all plays out. And then it will also be interesting to see if that makes any difference in the overall split between the Series S and the digital Series X. Now, let's jump over here. Let's just quickly talk about this because as we know, Xbox Live Gold is gone. It is now Xbox Game Pass Core. You have to sign up to that tier to get access to Xbox Live Gold and as well as any of the tiers above that. But they are commemorating Xbox Live Gold, which you love to see because Xbox Live Gold was a huge change in gaming for the good. And it was something that defined console online gaming, console connecting with your friends, the the multiplayer stuff with Halo on the or Halo 2 on the OG Xbox, all of this stuff, Xbox Live and Xbox Live Gold, they've always been just a huge staple in gaming that has brought us to an online service with consoles that we probably wouldn't be at if it wasn't for Xbox leading the way in that. And they are commemorating this with a new badge. It says, Xbox changed the look of the Xbox Live Gold tenure badge on your profile. It now says Xbox Live Gold with the years you were subscribed. And this is from Stallion83. He actually has a picture of the badge itself. It says Xbox Live Gold. And then it has the year you started to 2023. So super cool to see that they are doing this, commemorating it and, and not just letting it die off into the dust with Xbox Game Pass Core. All right, let's talk about the Embracer Group. The Embracer Group, I, I talked about this previously. They just seem very bad for gaming. Everything that they are doing is ending up in IPs being left behind, firings at studios, closing down studios. And we have some more info here that could affect Xbox, and it's just not good. It says Embracer has conducted layoffs A Tomb Raider dev Crystal Dynamics. More layoffs have occurred at Embracer-owned subsidiaries. This time at Crystal Dynamics, various staff members confirmed their departures on LinkedIn, explaining that they were informed of the cuts this morning. And specifically, they say, Sally, I'm one of the number of people impacted by the latest round of Embracer layoffs that have now hit Crystal Dynamics this morning. And goes on to say that he added, the affected departments include project management, PR, editing, and 2D art. And why this is a bad thing? Well, first of all, I mean, layoffs and closing down of studios where they have all this big up is always bad for gaming because who knows what's going to happen with Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was a great reboot that Crystal Dynamics created. I love the new trilogy that they made. Now all of that is up in the air, I'm guessing, with more of these layoffs and these studios shrinking. And then the other thing here is, as we know, Crystal Dynamics is working with the initiative at Xbox to create Perfect Dark. And how would this have an effect? Now, they did clarify that this will not be affecting those games. But you have to think that if they are shrinking the studio, they are going to have less resources, they are going to have less time, and it could end up impacting the overall development time for Perfect Dark or any other games like Tomb Raider in the future. But this is all under the Embracer group. This is the problem here. The Embracer group, they don't care about any of these IPs. They don't care about any of these studios. They're just going out there and trying to purchase as much as they can and then trim the fat whenever anything fails or ever they're not getting enough return on their investment. There is no, I think, real care about the future of the industry and the future of gaming. So it's unfortunate. We've seen this for a couple of months now with the Embracer. I think since they started purchasing things, we've seen a lot of negativity come out of what they have done and hopefully it doesn't continue. But I think going forward, games like Tomb Raider, games like Perfect Dark potentially are going to be affected by these layoffs and by key people leaving because of these cuts. And now when it comes to another studio that didn't really do very well with their first release, that is striking distance with the Callisto Protocol. Now Callisto Protocol, when they first showed it off, I thought it looked phenomenal. It was a game that I was very anticipating. Like I thought it was one of those games that was going to be a hit of 2022 that kind of came out of nowhere from Glenn Schofield, the co-creator of Dead Space, everything was lining up for this game to be very good. And then it came out and it just did not live up to the majority of the hype that people had for it. A lot of the reviews hurt this game. People just ignored it and passed it by because it didn't get the greatest reviews. And it looks like it's all coming full circle now as Glenn Schofield, the Striking Distance CEO who actually started this studio in 2019 is leaving as well as some other people. So as a crafting representative told Bloomberg Schofield, 
has decided to pursue new opportunities and that striking distance chief operating officer and chief financial officer are also leaving the company's voluntarily. And as we know, Schofield was former Sledgehammer Games and Visceral Games general manager and then the co-creator of Dead Space and then founded Striking Distance Studio in 2019. And now he's leaving behind the studio he founded to create his baby here, which is the Callisto Protocol, because I guess EA wasn't going to allow him to go and make do more Dead Space stuff, which the funny thing is they remade Dead Space, which was an absolute hit, got great reviews. Everybody loved it. And that probably had an effect on the Callisto Protocol as people were just going to be waiting there for the Dead Space remake rather than pay for this this new IP. And they say here that they had targeted 5 million sales for the Callisto Protocol, but after the slow start, they struggled to reach 2 million by the end of 2023. And they've laid off over 30 members of the staff in recent months and that it now has a headcount of around 90 employees. And the new chief development officer is going to be Steve Papa Cis, Papo Tusis. I don't know how to say his name, but anyway, Steve He's going to be replacing, sorry, he's, he was the chief development officer and he's going to be replacing Schofield as the CEO. And I mean, it's just not looking great for striking distance, not looking great for the Callisto protocol, depending on what they're going to be able to do with their next upcoming game. Are they going to be making a sequel to this game or are they going to just try to come up with a brand new IP that is much bigger hit than what the Callisto protocol was? Now let's talk about the Xbox Activision Blizzard deal and the UK regulators and the CMA, we are very close. It's super close to when we are going to be getting a final decision as to what is happening with this deal when it comes to the CMA. We know Xbox has gone ahead and they haven't closed the deal. They beat the FTC in court. They could have closed over the CMA, but they decided to wait. They want everybody to be happy. They want everything to close together. And as we've seen over the last couple of days, this entire process, I would say, is hurting Microsoft and Xbox a lot from the leaked documents to the resources that are going into this to the money that they're spending on this and taking away from what they should be only focusing on when it comes to Xbox, which is their content, their games, their ecosystem, all that stuff. It is hurting Microsoft, this process. Now, it will pay off if this goes through and they get Activision Blizzard. They're going to have some of the biggest IPs out there. It's going to help them expand out their ecosystem, expand out their mobile gaming side. It will be a big win when it does officially close. But we're still waiting on what the CMA is going to do. We know that the appeal was put on pause. Xbox has gone back and they are re they've renegotiated the deal, which the big thing that they are doing is selling off their cloud gaming streaming rights to Ubisoft to choose where games go onto the cloud. Is it going to change anything for Game Pass? Is it going to change anything for Xbox Cloud Gaming? But they're doing everything they can to satisfy the CMA so that they can just close this deal. And it looks like a preliminary decision will be coming next week. This comes via The Verge. It says, UK regulators likely to decide on Microsoft's Activision Blizzard deal next week. The UK Competition and Markets Authority is expected to issue a preliminary decision on Microsoft's Activision Blizzard deal next week. A source familiar with the situation tells The Verge. Now, this is preliminary, but the final decision is due October 18th. Now, I'm guessing preliminary decision is going to dictate what the final decision is going to be. So we will know, we'll have a lot more clarity as to whether this thing is going to be able to completely close with the CMA before the final deadline hits so hopefully this thing is coming to an end because i'm tired of, of this thing going on i'm sure everybody's tired of it that leak yesterday or two days ago whenever it happened i think is like the cherry on top of this entire thing with how long it's lasted how stupid some of the arguments have been pushing back against this deal especially from the sony side of thing we've seen all of the stuff that jim ryan lied about thinking saying that he was afraid Call of Duty was going to be exclusive. We know all of that was a lie. So it's just been a wild, crazy time with Xbox Activision Blizzard, but it should be ending relatively soon. And then we get to see what Xbox's plans are with these IPs. Which ones are coming to Game Pass right away? Which ones we're going to have to wait a bit longer for? Are they going to dive back into that back catalog and bring back some of these older games that people would love to see? I hope that they do, because Phil Spencer did comment on that earlier on in this process that he would be interested in doing that. But I'm going to end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.